Uh, do you think that, uh, in fact, uh, Dr. Zarif is, in fact, going to leave that post or, or you ultimately see some sort of an arrangement being made whereby, in fact, he doesn't actually vacate the post? Um, yes, I agree. And, you know, I can add that uh, there is precedent for this, that uh, when uh, uh, President Ahmadinejad uh, ascended to power in 2005 uh, and basically fired most of Iran's uh, career diplomats uh, and more moderate forces of Iranian uh, uh, diplomacy, um, Zarif, too, wanted to leave his post as uh, ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, but he was uh, forced to stay on for two years and defend uh, policies of President uh, Ahmadinejad, with whom he had very deep disagreements, uh, mostly because the Supreme Leader uh, asked him to stay on. Uh, and the reason uh, he was asked to stay on is that he has extraordinary uh, communication skills uh, in order to basically shift the blame uh, to the United States and drive a wedge between the U.S. Uh, and its allies, uh, especially the Europeans. Uh, and I think the Iranians still are very much in need of uh, Zarif's skills under the current circumstances where they see themselves as besieged uh, by the U.S. Uh, and its regional allies, uh, meaning Saudi Arabia, the UAE uh, and Israel. Uh, and in that sense, I think there is definitely a need for the Iranian system to try to keep him. Now, the question is how to do it. And I don't believe uh, a, a presidential rejection of his resignation would be sufficient because now that Zarif has gone public with the reason of his resignation uh, and he has said that he has done this as a way of basically nudging the system out of undermining the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs role in uh, uh, devising Iran's regional policy, I think this could, the corrective measure has to come from higher up uh, and it has to come from the Supreme Leader. Otherwise, I see it quite difficult for Zarif to be able to go back to his position and, have, uh, and restore his authority.